Kira, look, as the motion before the House this evening points out, the programme for government made a number of specific commitments, not only to protect, but also to enhance services for people with disabilities. The reality, however, has been very different. Over the past few years, there have been major cuts in services for people with disabilities. Some, such as the €300 Euro annual reduction in the respite care grant that was implemented last year, have been upfront budget cuts. Others, however, have been made by stealth. For example, capping SNA's special needs assistance at a time of rising enrolments has amounted to an effective cut, whatever the government counter uh, motion wishes to claim. Um, no matter how many times the government tries to pretend otherwise, to put a cap on the number of special needs assistants at a time when the number of kids with special needs going through the schools is increasing means that, the, means that schools aren't in a position to give children the services that they need and indeed that they're entitled to. And that's the reality. All senators have met families affected by this cut in SNAs. Last night I attended a public meeting organised by the INTO in Airfield. I know they're organising similar meetings across the country uh, in the run-up to the budget, where a number of parents spoke very emotionally about how special needs cuts have affected their children, both in terms of SNAs and also indeed the reduction in resource teaching hours. Over the resource teaching hours, um, despite the rollback by the government on, uh, a couple of months ago, were reduced by 15% in two years. Um, the proposal a few months ago to go actually down a further 10% was rightly um, overturned, but the previous cut still stands. So the result of that is that a child with autism who was entitled to five hours is now, now only getting 85% of that. Um, and that makes a huge difference in terms of that child's ability to engage um, in education and to have the, the opportunity to get the extra support that they need to have real inclusion. Um, and from a teacher's point of view, they're left in a heartbreaking situation where they have a child in their classroom um, who has been brought into mainstream education because they want to have all the opportunities that come with that, but aren't getting the supports that they actually need to avail of it. Um, and that's a heartbreaking situation, not just for, for parents, but for teachers as well. Um, there have been a wide range of other cuts, um, such as fun the funding for the access programmes for students with disabilities was cut by 20% in the universities in 2012. Um, provision for school leavers with intellectual disabilities um, has also been cut, as in hi highlighted by Inclusion Ireland. I know that members from all parties um, attended the Inclusion Ireland briefing, not just this summer, um, where they expressed their concerns about whether to be sufficient places for school leavers this September, but actually the previous year as well. Um, and I think we all took uh, on face value the government's bona fides when it was announced last year um, that that situation wouldn't uh, occur again, that the government would actually ensure that sufficient resources were put in place to ensure that young people with intellectual disabilities who are finishing through the second level system would have adequate either education or training places or day placements uh, to give them the same opportunities that every other young person takes for granted. Because uh, everybody else finishes their leave and serves and decides do I want to go to third level, do I want to go to a PLC college, other further education opportunities, and they have a range of services offered to them. Um, whereas children with intellectual disabilities don't have that choice. Uh, and in fact, you know, I've, I wrote to, I've written to Minister Lynch a number of times with this issue over the last couple of months, um, and the government's response has been that uh, placements are being offered to all the young people affected. But what's happening on the ground is that young people who previously would have got full-time placements are only being given part-time hours, um, which is woefully inadequate. They also have no input into the type of services that they're being given. Um, so they're really being kind of asked to fit into uh, what, what's on offer rather than what actually suits their needs and abilities. Um, and I know that that's a deeply upsetting uh, situation for the young people and, and for their families. Earlier this year, the government also announced that the mobility allowance was being discontinued without putting in place an alternative again, another decision which didn't seem to actually have been thought through. Um, and it took people in really, with really, really severe disabilities having to protest outside Leinster House for the government even to listen to the impact that that would have. Um, so the reason that we have tabled this de debate tonight is in advance of the budget to flag these issues. 
because we don't want to have a situation where in a couple of weeks' time similar cuts are made and ministers are saying, oh, we hadn't really thought about how, how it would affect people um, and, and we'll look at it now. We want these issues actually to be on the agenda and we hope that members of all parties um, will lobby government ministers over the coming weeks to ensure that that is the case. Because I, I know they've, uh, that you know, there are Fine Gael uh, and Labour, uh, Labour centres who were deeply uncomfortable last year with having support the cut in the rest by care grant. We had a very emotional debate in this House um, over that cut. It came very, very close in a, in, in a debate. Um, Labour lost one of its, its senators over it, which I think was regrettable. Um, but with Senator Gill, I might disagree, <laughs> smiling at me. Um, but it's your, your, your touching sympathy. Would you like to lose more? No, it's huh? your touching sympathy for us that makes me smile. <laughs> well, yeah, um, it was a claim to train me. No, <laughs> but interruption, please. But look, members on all, all sides of the House, in the course of that debate, expressed sympathy for the, for the people involved, said that you wish it hadn't happened, said that you would lobby ministers after the event to have it overturned. The cut stands. Um, all we're asking is that ahead of the budget, that, that members put pressure on ministers to avoid a, a similar situation happening again. Um, there have been other cuts over the last year, such as the, uh, those in the housing adaptation grants, um, which were cut by an average of 38% to local authorities, which has led to a farcical situation where Dublin City Council had to close down uh, the grant scheme altogether um, two months ago. So you have, you, they're in a position now uh, where if somebody has a serious accident um, or, or disability and can't go home because of something simple like a ramp, uh, downstairs toilet, showers, guardrails, they're left in hospital instead. And not only is that deeply damaging to that person's dignity and their, and their sense of independence, um, it also costs the state far more because you have somebody who's stuck in a health system instead when, uh, when they'd actually rather be at home. Um, so in so many ways, all, the, the, all of these cuts not only are socially incredibly unfair, um, but they're also economically silly. Um, because they simply don't stand up, you're going to end up having to spend more in other areas. Um, as I know, Senator O'Brien will outline in more detail, um, there's also been huge cuts um, to St Michael's House and other uh, similar services. I'm just more familiar with Michael's House than other areas because um, they serve uh, a lot of people in, uh, in North Dublin. I know that members will be familiar with other services that I wouldn't be. Um, but St Michael's House have had to reduce their staffing levels right across the organisation in day services, clinical services and administration. They've uh, been forced to implement a contraction of their residential and respite, and respite service. Um, they've had to close uh, their day service um, for their residential services for the day, uh, one day each month. Um, I've had elderly parents on to me uh, upset about how they're going to look after. I, an adult child with a disability on that day because they feel that they're not actually able to look after them for the day and yet um, the person's being forced out of a day service. Their trainee allowance uh, has been ended. There's also been reductions in transport services. So right across the board, because of a huge cut in their HSE grant, they've had to cut services. So in a whole host of areas, there have been major cuts for people with disabilities over the last few years. But I mean, I want to say that in Fianna Fáil, we fully accept that cuts have to be made somewhere. Um, we, I know there's still speculation this year about the, the scale um, of, of the budget, uh, of the size of the budget in terms of tax rises and expenditure cuts that we needed um, to actually reach our targets about whether that will be the full 3.1 billion or whether it could be smaller. Um, but we're not arguing as other parties do and indeed I was at a, a meeting last night where another former member of the Labour Party um, stood up and said there was no need for any austerity and any cuts in the budget, um, that everything could be rosy in the garden and nobody would have to be affected. I don't think that's credible and I've never argued that and neither have, neither have no <laughs> independent, <laughs> independent Labour. No, but I, I don't think that's credible and I don't think that's a fair message actually either to the, to the, to, uh, the parents that were there. Minute. One minute, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's a fair message either to the parents that are there because we all have to accept the realities that we're in. But there are alternatives and last year we put forward an alternative budget that reached the same overall tar target as the one that was implemented by the government but protected services like uh, mental health services and those for people with disabilities. We will be doing the same again this year and all we're asking is that the government look at fairer alternatives, things like increasing the universal social charge by 3% only on people who earn over 100,000. 
I don't understand why that wasn't done last year. Um, and that's precisely the type of thing that should always be looked at before the kind of unthinkable disability cuts that I've outlined earlier. Um, so the reason that we've highlighted that, we've tabled this debate, as I said at the outset, is to highlight the cuts that have already been made. Um, not to score a political point, um, but just to ensure that members are aware uh, of the wide range, because I know people from their individual briefs um, would be aware of, say, education cuts on one side, but they might not um, be, be conscious of all the other cuts that people with disabilities have taken. Um, because, as the Disability Federa Federation of Ireland constantly point out, um, as well as seeing reductions in specific services for dis people with disabilities, um, people have also had their basic payments cuts as well, so they're having a, a, a double whammy and a doubly unfair effect. But the reason that we've tabled the debate primarily is to get in ahead of the budget, to signal this as an area that we feel should be a priority, to seek all party support for that. Um, I, we were hopeful uh, that we wouldn't actually have to have a government counter amendment, that we could all agree that this is an area um, that deserves support from all of us. Um, unfortunately, I saw this morning that a counter amendment has been on uh, table. I think that's regrettable, but I would ask members that even if you are, well, if we have a vote later and you, we walk to opposite sides of the lobby, um, that if in your hearts you agree that disability services should be protected, that you'll at least use the next few weeks to reach out to your ministers and make that point um, and ask them to ensure that in making choices in the next budget, they pick ones that are fairer than those that were picked last year. Thank you.